All right, YouTube, what's going on? It's Hightower5000 here today, bringing you a Nomad Elegate quest guide. The quest requirements for this quest are you must have 75 mining, 75 construction, and 75 woodcutting. You must have also completed Dishonor Among Thieves, Heart of Stone, The Mighty Fall, Throne of Miscellanea, Nomad's Requiem, and The Void Stairs Back. It is also suggested that you complete Wild Gothic Sleeps and Blood Runs Deep, however these two quests are not required. There is multiple recommended items that you can bring to make this quest easier, however they are not really needed. Dreadnips from the Dominion Tower, any shield to be able to use Renaissance for Nomad's Charge Blast in the second phase, I'll come back to this when we get to the final boss fight. Healing food and combat equipment, there's no preference over what equipment you do use, however range or mage will be a slight advantage as you have the distance. If you are using magic then you can use debuff spells and also the affinity debuff when fighting nomad as this will be the most strongest way to attack nomad. It's also recommended you bring stat boosting potions such as overloads or supersets. A beast of burden for the final fight so we can fill it up with more foods. And then it's also suggested you bring an aggression potion for the Bansidian, Afterlife and protecting the battering ram. There are multiple enemies to defeat during this quest. Nomad, level 799, a special boss. Several Bandosidians. Order of Ascension members, Shame and Guilt who are all mini bosses in themselves. Once you're ready to start this quest, make your way to the location shown on screen, which is the entrance to Soul Wars, just south of the bank in Edgeville. Once you arrive at the quest start location, enter through the Soul Wars portal. You then want to speak with Zimber Fizz, who is located just to your east. Select option number two, talk about Nomad's Elegy. You will then get the quest prompt, go ahead and accept the quest. You then want to investigate Nomad's tent, which is to the east. You'll then be teleported into the room where Nomad Requiem finished, you want to investigate Nomad's throne. You have now found 1 out of 5 clues. Turn and investigate these strange emissions to your southwest. Continue through the dialogue, and that'll be clue number two found. Head to your north, and you will see some sticky goo. This is just beside the throne. That'll be clue number three out of five. Continue north, and you will see some crystals on the ground. When you investigate the crystals, they will blow up. You'll then be brought into dialogue with Death and Eclaren. If you do get interrupted while you're in Death's realm, you'll be teleported outside to near Draenor Lodestone. You simply want to re-enter where you're teleported to and select option number two, continue with Nomad's Elegy. Once you're finished the dialogue, head to your north and then enter through Death's door. From this point on, make sure you have combat equipment. If you die, you will be returned to Death's office and will have to leave and re-enter to resume progress with the quest. You then want to speak with Death. Select option number one, what do we need to do now? And then select option number five, I have to go. Note that we are about to go into combat. It might be worth watching this section before doing it yourself. From here, head over to your northeast. And then climb down the stairs and then embark on the bloodstained jetty. Select option number one, yes, and we're about to go into combat. Once you arrive, you will land up speaking with Zanuck. Continue through the dialogue.
You'll eventually get out of this cutscene. You just want to continue through the dialogue with Zanuck. So for this next part, we're going to be helping defeat some Bandossians and helping protect cave goblins with Zanuck. This sounds quite simple, but it is really difficult. In total, there are three waves with the progress being saved after each wave. If you do have aggression potions, please take these as this will greatly help. At the start of each wave, you'll have one or two Bandossian soldiers spawn in. You can then kill these off easily. However, as the round goes on, more and more start to spawn in and eventually you will get overwhelmed. Zanuck will do some help, but he won't do too much, so it is really just down to yourself. You can't really rely on Zanuck. As you get further into the round, what's going to happen is you have so many on you, you just want to start tagging them because you don't want the Bandossian soldiers to be attacking the goblins, you want them to just be attacking you, so you're going to be essentially tanking up to against maybe 10 enemies at once. This is a lot, however you want this because if you lose all of the cave goblins you will fail. If you do fail then you'll be teleported back out to the bloodstained jetty. You simply then just have to re-enter and repeat. The advantage of this though is, as I said, after each wave it is saved. So if, for example, you fail on the third wave, which is highly likely, like I did, then you will just go back into wave number three, but the good thing is you'll go back up to ten cave goblins. It does make the world a difference when you have ten goblins to start off wave three so this isn't actually a bad tactic if you're struggling just let it overwhelm you and then go ahead and retry the final wave with the maximum amount of goblins once you finish wave one you will get more dialogue with the zanuck continue through his chat my tactic for this is keep a high line, so when they start to spawn in, kill off as many Bandossians and be in their spawn and then slowly retreat back over the bridge. Do not do what I did, do not attempt to be attacking them in with the area where all of the cave goblins are. Okay, this is sometimes a last resort, but if you can, try and get all the enemies out of there. Just because at one, it'll be easier to see the individual Bandossian soldiers that are attacking the cave goblins, so you can focus on them momentarily. And two, it means that no soldiers go astray, so that means you're less likely to lose cave goblins. It's not the easiest thing to do. Do expect to fail, but if you fail, it's not the worst outcome. You just try again, and then it will be easier. Good luck. Once you finish wave 2, once again you'll get some more dialogue with Zanuck and then they'll start to respawn again. Once you manage to complete wave 3, Zanuck will engage in more dialogue, he will say they are all gone. The cave goblins will then be thankful. From here you want to head round to the northwestern jetty, make sure you have at least two free inventory slots. You then want to climb down and embark off the dusty jetty. Note that there is no combat for this. Select option number one, sail to the afterlife. You will then arrive in Lumbridge, you will then see Astrid's. Go and speak with Astrid's. Continue through the dialogue. You then want to exit out of the castle, and then you want to head to your south. In the building just to the north of Bob's Axe Shop, you want to enter in and you will see Jessica. 
speak with Jessica. You then want to head back into the Lumbridge Castle and then head over to your southwest where there is a wizard. Go ahead and speak with this wizard. You then want to select option number one, I'm not Jessica. Select option number three, my name is Jessica. Select option number two, Wizard Gurizag. The wizard will change into a creature and then change back to a wizard. Select option number two, you represent danger. Select option number four, I'm not afraid of you. And then select option number one, then I won't fail. You then want to enter into the castle when you're back to being your normal character and climb up the southern staircase one flight. You will then see Hazel Mare in the bedroom to the south, enter in and speak with. You then want to head north from your current position and then head outside using the door. You will then come across Hazel Mare once again, go ahead and speak with. Hazel Mare will then teleport away again. Go back inside and climb up the stairs. You then will see a ladder up against the northern wall of the bank. Climb up this and you'll see Hazel Mare once more. Go ahead and speak with. And Hazel Mare will teleport away. You then want to climb down the ladder once again. Climb back down the stairs to the bottom floor. And then exit out of the front of the castle. You then want to enter into the doorway just to your southeast. This means you're now in the southern tower of the castle gate and then climb up the ladder. You'll then come across Kor Asi. Go ahead and speak with. At this stage, you should now have two of Jessica's memories in your inventory. Use these on each other and then you will get Jessica's full memory. Climb up the ladder once more. You will then see Hazelmere once again. Go ahead and speak with. And then Hazelmere will then teleport away once again. You then want to climb back down the ladder. Climb back down the ladder again. And then head back into the building where Jessica is located. Speak with Jessica. She will then teleport away with her memory. Enter into Bob's Act Shop, the building to the south, and speak with Hazelmare. Hazelmare will then teleport away. Head back into the castle grounds. And then head round to the back of the castle. You will then see Hazel Mare once again. Go ahead and speak with. Hazel Mare will then teleport away again. Head back round to the front of the castle. Speak with Hazel Mare. Select option number one. I need you to help me fight Nomad. He will then teleport away again. Enter into the castle and then enter into the dining room. You'll see Jania. Go ahead and speak with. It doesn't matter what option you select here. I'm going to select option number one, friendly greeting. Climb up the staircase to your north. Note we are about to go into combat against a level 98. Enter into the bedroom to the north, the duke's bedroom. There will then be a chest up against the southern wall. Open this up, or attempt to. You'll then be attacked by guilt at level 98. Go ahead and kill guilt. 
Once you kill guilt, guilt will drop a guilt ridden key. Pick this up. You then want to reopen the chest and this time you will get into it. Search the chest and then you'll get another half memory. Climb up the staircase once again to your north. Note we're about to go into combat again. Enter into the Lumbridge Castle Bank. And then attempt to open the chest. Go ahead and continue the next fight against Shame, who is also level 98. Shame will then drop a key once Shame dies. Go ahead and pick this up and then open up the chest. Search the chest and then you should get the other memory. You want to use the memories on each other to create a full memory. Climb back down the stairs to the bottom floor. You then want to enter back in the dining room and then re-speak with Xenia. Once the dialogue is complete, she will teleport away. Go back outside the castle and speak with Astrid. You'll then get a cutscene. Continue through the dialogue. Select either option. I'm going to select option number one. Yes, I feel the same. You then want to enter the portal just to your east. Select option number one. Yes, to leave limbo. You will then arrive back on the dusty jetty. Death will speak to you. Continue through the dialogue. Go south and climb up two sets of stairs. You then want to go and plan the war table beside Death. Death will engage in conversation. Continue through. And then you'll get a cutscene. Continue through the dialogue. Select option number one. I just need to ask you a few things first. You then want to keep choosing the option which currently is option number two, threaten him, until you get the option remove crystal. Keep choosing remove crystal until he then dies. Note that you will be doing this for quite a while. At least a minute. Eventually, you will defeat him, and he will die. Just to your north, you will notice a battering ram. We'll be dealing with this in a second, but plan at the war table again. Select any two companions. I'm going to select Zanuck 1, and then Jania 1. You'll then be teleported into a cave. Select option number one, gather wood. And then get your other person to gather metal by selecting option number two. You will then keep watch. Notes that while resources are being collected, the voice of Nomad will start to speak. Do note that both of your options will take a good few minutes to gather all the resources you require. I have gone ahead and sped this part up as there is lots of resource gathering and lots of nomad speaking. It does take a good 2 or 3 minutes so I've sped it up. Pause the video at this stage. Once you gather all the resources you'll get a bit of dialogue. Continue through that and then the voice of nomad will then start to speak once more. You then want to exit to the west.
you'll then be teleported back to where the war table is. This time you want to go and build the battering ram blueprint to the north. Eventually after about a minute the battering ram blueprint will disappear and then the battering ram will go to an incomplete stage. The voice of nomads will keep speaking. After about another minute the battering ram will continue to grow in height. You will then get more voice of nomad commands. Eventually after about 3 or 4 minutes death will start to speak to you again. You will then notice that the battering ram is now complete. Return it back south to the war table. You then want to plan at the war table. And then you will get some more dialogue in a cutscene. Continue through the chat. You then want to run round to the battering ram to your north. You'll notice there's an interface in the top left hand corner with pictures of everyone. So for this next part we need to run round to the battering ram. You'll then see in the top left hand corner we've got images of 6 NPCs. These options there are the same as right clicking in command and moving any of the NPCs, just if there's any confusion. What you want to do is stand in front of the battering ram. This will then slowly start to move up behind you. Do note that the ram moves very slowly and there is a bit of delay from when you standing in front of the ram to it moving forward. What you need to do is you need to continue up the path to the north up to the door. This is quite straightforward. As you do this though enemies will start to spawn in and you will have to kill them. However you've got your team and the team actually do most of the damage for this. You need to make sure though as your battering ram slowly moves up you continue to move your team up. Try positioning your team in front of the battering ram where you possibly can so you can make sure they do most of the damage, it's the best tactic. Note that you will have to do some of the damage though. When you get to the door for a while there'll be lots of enemies that spawn in but you'll just be able to kill these off very quickly. Once you've got everyone in position move in front of the battering ram like I did just there. You then want to start moving people up. The voice of nomad will then start talking.
Once you get through the door, a Claren will engage with some conversation, continue through. Then this is where things change. Once you get through the door, it's going to get a lot more busier. What you want to do is you want to continue to navigate the ram north up to the next door. However, you're now on a smaller bridge. What you want to do is you want to bring two NPCs up to the front. It doesn't necessarily matter which NPCs you bring up. It does suggest that you bring Zanuck and Death up and put Zanuck at the northwest and then put Death at the northeast and then put the remaining four at the back at the start of the bridge to the south. I went for this tactic, but I didn't necessarily use those NPCs in those locations. I had Jessica, and then I switched up who was in the northeast corner. This worked out fine, as long as you have four of your NPCs just to your south at the start of the bridge, then this means you can't really get flanked from behind, and you only need to worry about damage from the northeast and northwest. Your NPCs can do the bulk of this. Where you want to focus your damage, I would definitely say spread yourself around. If the battering ram is being hit, then you want to go ahead and protect that as much as possible. Likely it's going to get hit if you position your NPCs correctly, only from the northeast and northwest. However, to your south where the other four NPCs are guarding the start of the bridge, there can be quite a build up there at times, so you will need to focus your time there at times. Overall, this is quite an odd sort of part to the quest because it's not necessarily a challenge. You do need to keep the battering ram alive though. As the battering ram depletes, you'll also notice there's a separate unlinked bar at the top of the screen. This is basically the door percentage and your battering ram needs to stay alive to be able to get this bar at the top of the screen down to the far left. This is very slow going and it's difficult to picture where you should put yourself. I would just try and do the maximum amount of damage and mainly focus on the battering ram itself and focus on its damage and where it's taking damage from and putting most of your resources into that area. There are times during this as well when you will get dragged into lots of fighting, especially at the start of the bridge. Do not let this fool you because there will still be damage going on to your battering ram and also watch out for your health. At one or two stages during this, I dropped under 2,000 life points just because I was so worried and focused on other things other than my health. Make sure you do not die. If you do land up dying, then you'll be teleported into Death's Realm. Eventually, when the bar at the top fills up, you will complete that section. You will then get some more dialogue with the rest of the gang. You will then come across Nomad. In front of you, you'll see Nomad's level 779. However, we do not want to fight him just yet. You want to leave by using the stairs just to your south. You then want to select option number one, yes, as we're going to bank. You'll then be teleported just outside of Draenor Village. Make your way to a bank somewhere in Gilinor as we are now about to prepare for the final fight against Nomaz, level 799. I highly recommend you watch through me going and killing Nomad first of all because there are so many special attacks. In total there's also 7 phases and you are likely to die. This is a big warning for hardcore Iron Man. The items you will require is very strong combat equipment and high healing foods. What I mean by high healing food is food that restores your hit points to over their maximum. This is due to one of Nomad's special attacks causing 7500 hit points and damage. It's also recommended that you have a high tier shield. This will be used for Renison's defensive special ability. This combats one of Nomad's special attacks which I'll talk about more later on in the fight. You will also require stat boosting potions. Stat boosting potions you want are related to your prayer and also your skills. Now your attack skills in particular, or combat skills should I say, sorry, will be getting drained. So I'd highly recommend bringing a combination of prayer potions and super restore potions as those will do the trick. 
I also brought along overloads as well. If you are using magic, use a Guthic staff with debuff spells. This will do the most damage. I just went for my regular range setup as I wanted to give this guide from a more basic point of view. I didn't want to do it with equipment that nobody could get access to. You can see that I'm using Carol's crossbows with the Royal Dehyde setup. An overall quite basic setup and you can really see how I struggled a lot in this fight. I did die multiple times. It's also recommended you bring a Beast of Burden. Pack this with as much food as possible as you will just take a lot of damage in general throughout this fight. Finally, one-click teleports do not work. Any form of teleportation out of the arena does not work. If you want to leave then you have to go back to the entrance and select quick leave like we just did when we were leaving as we weren't ready to fight Nomad. I would also highly recommend during this that you have any auras activated such as Vampiriism which go ahead and help out with combat because it is a lot of combat for a long duration of time. Finally, once you're ready, make your way to the location shown on screen which is Draenor Lodestone and the entrance to Death's Hourglass. Once you arrive at the quest start point, do not enter in yet. We need to go ahead and make sure we have the Renaissance defensive ability put onto our hotbar. Make sure this is also in a clickable location as well because one of these special attacks will require us to use this very, very quickly. So make sure it is visible and ready to use at any time. Overall, there's no preference on what prayers you use. I'd recommend using Soul Split if you have it. If not, use Deflect from Melee. Once you're ready, enter into Death's Hourglass. You will now be back in the final boss fight room with Nomads. We are now ready to fight. To start the fight, head round to your north and then attack Nomads. You will then get some dialogue and the fight will begin. So this fight is split into seven different phases four combat phases and then each of these combat phases is split up by an NPC phase which they aren't necessarily combat related they're sort of mini games in with themselves. If you do die within the four combat phases then that is it you are dead permanently you will then be teleported out to death's hourglass if you do die your gravestone will spawn outside of death's hourglass you will then need to exit out of the room where death is and then re-enter through the hourglass to get back into the final fight instance. If you die during Xenia, death or Eclaren's phases, which are the NPC phases which I was just talking about, then these are safe deaths. What will happen is you'll just go back to the start of that phase and you'll be okay. Note that you're playing as the NPCs in this section so it's not actually your character that's dying. So, in the first combat phase, you are going to just dwindle away at Nomad's health by simply attacking him and continue to do this. However, you need to make sure that you move away from the centre of the bridge to avoid Gelinor's hands. Under the bridge, Gelinor sits. Gelinor is massive and every so often Gelinor will smack his hand up onto the centre of the bridge. Make sure you're not under his hand or you will take a significant amount of health points. If I cannot repeat this point enough, make sure your health points are high at every single stage of this fight. Just due to the amount of special attacks and damage that can randomly be inflicted into you, it's best to just keep high health points. There will be shadows that will appear on the ground. Make sure you avoid these or you will be hit by rapid powerful magic attacks. These are in purple and you'll notice them as soon as they start to hit you. You just need to basically move away from them as fast as possible. All in all, that's it for phase one. Phase one isn't too difficult. Just make sure you focus on where you're standing and make sure you pay attention to your own health points as well as Nomad's. From this first phase, you'll really get a feel for what the fight's going to be like. I actually struggled a lot with this first phase, didn't react to the two of Nomad's attacks and landed up going through all of my food. So it sent me off to a really bad start and you can tell why I died multiple times throughout this. Once you complete the first combat phase, you will then be changed into Xenia and this will start the first NPC phase or the second phase in total. 
What you need to do for this is use the three abilities which will be shown at the top of the screen. They're just buttons and you need to use these on different monsters to kill them off to complete the phase. Quite simple. What you need to do is run around the arena and basically just continually use them. You want to use Fire Blast on the Rorari. You want to use Shield Dome on the Gladi. And then you want to use Shadow Stock on the Scutari. All are listed at the bottom of the screen. When you need to heal, which there will be occasions when you do need to heal, then you need to target the Cap Sari. And I would recommend doing this last as they heal Genia when no other targets are available. So kill off the other targets first then target the Cap Sari as they will heal some hit points for you. I highly recommend going around the corners slowly when you're making your way around and try and target only two or three enemies at once. You don't want multiple attacking you at once and it's much better in a 1v1 scenario. With the shadows that appear on the floor, make sure you're at least two tiles away from them or you can be hit. If you get directly hit, you will be damaged even more. One tactic for this is to go ahead and group the different enemies up together. You can then splash multiple damage onto each monster. Another attack to try is to alternate between two monsters so you're constantly attacking. This is quite a good method as well because the abilities do have a cooldown. For this, it is worth sometimes going very slow as well so you can make sure you only land up getting attacked by one or if you're struggling for hit points, just wait for a Cap Sani to start to come towards you and then attack that to get your hit points back up. Once you have continuously run around the room and you've managed to kill off all of the enemies, including the Cap Sari, then Xenia's phase will end. You'll then finish the second phase and then go into the second combat phase, or the third phase in total. This second combat phase is very, very similar to the first combat phase. However, there is now an additional attack which we do need to be aware of. Nomad at times will now start to teleport you near him and orders you to face the wrath. When he shouts face the wrath you need to switch to your shield and then use the Renaissance special ability to negate any and all damage from the attack. Now it's quite easy to go ahead and do this however make sure you don't take your shield off too soon. When he fires a special attack towards you, your character should move the shield into position. It's sort of a small movement. And then there should also be a zero. This zero is very important. You need to see this zero. And when you see this zero, that is when you know the attack is over. Do not take your shield off too quickly like I did. In some instances, I took my shield off too early and I took 7,500 hit points, which is a lot. Again, make sure that your hit points are continuously over 7,500, if not at full at all times. Again, make sure you are aware of the other two special attacks which are going on. Avoid Gelinor's hands and also move away from the shadows. Do note that sometimes these can stack, so you can all of a sudden be hit for a lot of hit points in very, very quick succession. Once you defeat Nomad for the second time, that will be the second combat phase complete, and then you'll go into Death's phase. This is the second NPC phase and the fourth phase in total. What you need to do is you need to start to provoke Gilinor. There's a set order you need to go round the room. You need to go to the north, then to the south, then to the east, and then to the west. That's shown on screen. Each time what you want to do is go to the center part of that direction. So for example, I, if I'm going to the north, I then want to go to the center part of the north. You then want to use the special ability, which is at the top of the screen, provoking. You then want to go ahead and quickly get out of the way of where you're standing. That'd be the north center. You then want to go to the northeast or the northwest. You'll see because basically his hand slaps back down where you provoke him from. And then what you want to do is then stand back into that hand when it's laying down and you want to use the Scythe special ability. Again, the Scythe special ability is activated along the top of the screen. And then you want to claim the Release Spirit. This is quite glitchy, this part. There were multiple times when I thought I was standing out the way, but then I got hit by Death's Arm. Also, there would be multiple times when I thought I was beside close enough or even in the hand of Nomad, I would use the scythe, but then I wasn't either fast enough 
or something that happened, a glitch, and I didn't manage to get the release spirit. If you manage or don't manage to get the release spirit, then you just need to continue on to the next part of the room. Again, continue following the directions of north, then south, then east, and then west. And then you just need to repeat this until, unfortunately, the phase is over. This can take quite a long time and do expect to fail on this. Again, you really need to watch out for your hit points. You can't be hit by the hand too much or you will die. But again, because this is an NPC phase, if you do die, you'll just be brought back to the very south of the room and then you'll go again. Again, this isn't you dying, this is death dying, so this element of this is a safe death. After a while and you've collected enough of the release spirits from death, you will then end that phase and then you'll go into the third combat phase, which in total is the fifth phase. When you start the third combat phase, once again you need to remember the special attacks from the two previous combat phases. Again, there is a new special attack which you do need to be aware of, however. First of all, you need to go ahead and get Nomad down to half health, simple as. However, when he gets to half health, he will then spawn a clone of himself. You need to then start killing them both. The real problem here is that there's no way to tell which one is the clone and which one is the real one. You basically need to go ahead and kill one of them and then if the real nomad is killed then the phase will end, however if you do not kill the real nomad then you'll have to go and kill the other one. There is no way to tell which nomad is which unfortunately, it is totally random, which is really frustrating. I got very lucky and I managed to kill the right nomad, however if you are not so lucky then you will have to go and kill another half of nomad essentially. One big tactic for this is focus on one nomad when two of them spawn in because at a certain point when you've got two nomads, that means two level 799s will be attacking you at once. Let me say that again, you will have two level 799s attacking you at once. The amount of damage you take during this time is just astronomical, so get one of the nomads killed as soon as possible. Make sure you are aware though of the three other special attacks. You can have two nomads attacking you, you can have Gilinor's hands, you can also be standing in the dark magic and the nomad can also land up calling out the special attack with the shield. So, so much is going on at once and this is where you're going to be likely to start to die. It's really unfortunate, things get very very chaotic and I died once or twice in this combat phase alone. Once you manage to kill the correct nomad, it might be both nomads, and the third combat phase will end. You'll then go into the third NPC phase with a Claren, which is the sixth phase in total. So for a Claren's NPC phase, I'll quickly explain the actual definition and then I'll explain how I really interpretate this. So what you want to do is run around the room in an anti-clockwise direction releasing the souls as you get into the middle of a group of them. You'll see them quite easily on the pathway and you'll also see them in your minimap. Make sure you get over half the initial total number of spirits. The total number of spirits is listed in the box at the top of the screen. You have a clan's total and then Gelinor's total. Just make sure your total is higher. The more souls you release, the more powerful the attack reflected onto Gelinor will be. Once all the souls have been released, continue circling until Gelinor stops firing the beam. Then you need to shield yourself from Gelinor's attack with the ability, the other shield ability at the top of the screen that is, in order to reflect the damage onto Gelinor, you will have to repeat this process a few times. So what this really means is you need to run around the room. You then need to go ahead and use the special ability and you need to go and make sure you're standing in the middle of a group of souls to get the points. Make sure you get more points than Gilinor does, it's quite simple. The more souls you release, the more powerful the attack reflected onto Gilinor will be. This really, you're not essentially really doing the attack, but the attack comes from Gilinor and then you basically put up your shield and then that attack ricochets back onto Gilinor. So it's really Gilinor inflicting it on himself and we're just, I guess, deflecting and ricocheting the attack. All in all, this is quite difficult because if you land up getting a lot of points, which is a good thing, but then you don't get your shield up at the right time, then that attack will pretty much finish you off. It will hit you for near 
to your full health points. There is, again, sort of a glitch or a timing thing which you need to really get right. I didn't really get it right at all, and I sort of relied on luck a bit for this, but when you are continuing to circle around the room and Gillinor stops firing the beam, then you need to shield yourself from Gillinor's attack. Now, the shield only lasts a certain amount of time, and the certain amount of time you've got to put that shield up in, there is a longer pause than the shield's duration. So, it's sort of just put the shield up and then hope that you're still covered when he attacks. In general, there did seem to be consistency, however, I didn't really manage to find the right time to put the shield up, and it took me one or two attempts to actually get my sink in there with putting up the shield and Gillinor's attack. Again, that could be a glitch, but please leave comments down below if you've got any tips on that. Once Eclaren's NPC phase has finished, you will then go on to the final combat phase. This is phase number 7 and it is the last phase which you'd need to deal with. In this phase, Nomad will only be using rapid melee attacks. Kill him by any means. If using ranger magic, then you can run around the room and avoid damage. You can use surge to gain distance. Watch out for Gillinor's attacks. This final combat phase is extremely difficult because the amount of food you go through will just be astronomical. Again, this is why we've got a beast of burden full of food though. All of these special attacks will be taking place here, so make sure you are aware of that. However, this is where you really want to start to gain distance and make use of the room layout. You have got four corners. I recommend using the pillars on these corners to your advantage, especially if you need to eat or withdraw food from your beast of burden. You then also maybe want to think about changing to protect from melee. That's what I did because all of Nomad's attacks himself will be melee. Though other special attacks will also inflict damage on you. So you still need to be aware of that. But a lot of those you can't really, you can't deflect them from any other prayers. So that's why I'd maybe suggest changing up to the deflect from melee. Though it is up to yourself. Once you finally finish phase number 7, you'll then be teleported into the bridge in the middle. That is the final phase and the fight now complete. You'll then get an option to choose to kill somebody. You either have to choose death or a claren. It does not matter which option you choose here. You'll then get a cutscene which you can go ahead and skip by pressing escape. You'll then get some more dialogue with Nomad, continue through the chat, select any option here, I'm going to select option number one, what master, Sleesk will then appear, continue through the dialogue, select any option, I'm going to select option number one, why. You then have the choice to let Nomad live or kill Nomad. I'm going to let Nomad live. Continue through all of the dialogue. Once you finish that cutscene, you will then be teleported back out to where the war table is. You want to speak with death. Select option number one, I have said my goodbyes. Select any option, I'm selecting option number one, like who. You then have an option to either bring Zanik back or keep him dead. I'm going to select option number one, come back with me, Zanik. Then select option number one, goodbye, my friends. You'll then be teleported back to Gelinor, and that is the quest complete. Congratulations, you've completed Nomad's Elegy. You're awarded with one quest point, 50,000 construction XP, 50,000 mining XP, 50,000 woodcutting XP and 50,000 combat XP. 
Note all of these are in lamps. A soul in a box blueprints. A urn enhancer blueprint along with two treasure hunter keys. Thanks very much for watching this video. Please leave a like rating and subscribe if you are new around here. Go down into the description below and check out my other quest playlist CDs where I'm sure I will be able to help you out with another quest. There's also links in my Patreon, Discord and Twitter down there which any support on any of those platforms you could show me would be greatly appreciated. And that is all for this video ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for watching, my name is Hightower5000 and I'm out.